The grace of the Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Jesus Christ bore our sin in his body on the cross that we might be dead to sin and alive to all that is good. Blessed be the name of the Lord. After Jesus had prayed, he went out with his disciples across the Kidron Valley to a place where there was a garden, which he and his disciples entered. Now Judas, who betrayed him, also knew the place, because Jesus often met there with his disciples. Judas, therefore, having been paid by Annas and Caiaphas and other religious leaders, to guide the Roman military unit and the servants of Annas and Caiaphas to Jesus came to the garden where Jesus was with lamps and torches and swords and spears. Then Jesus, knowing all that was to happen to him, came forward and asked them, Whom are you looking for? They answered, Jesus of Nazareth. Jesus replied, I am he. Judas, who betrayed him, was standing with them. When Jesus said to them, I am he, they stepped back and fell to the ground. Again he asked them, Whom are you looking for? And they said, Jesus of Nazareth. Jesus answered, I told you that I am he. So if you are looking for me, let these men go. This was to fulfill the word that he had spoken. I did not lose a single one of those whom you gave me. Then Simon Peter, who had a sword, drew it, struck the high priest's slave and cut off his right ear. The slave's name was Malchus. Jesus said to Peter, Put your sword back into its sheath. Am I not to drink the cup that the Father has given me? Then the Roman military unit and its commander and the servants of Annas and Caiaphas seized Jesus and bound him securely. What wondrous love is this, O oh my soul, O oh my soul? What wondrous love is this, O oh my soul? What wondrous love is this that caused the Lord of bliss to bear the dreadful curse for my soul, for my soul, to bear the dreadful curse for my soul. When I was sinking down, sinking down, sinking down, when I was sinking down, sinking down. When I was sinking down beneath God's righteous frown, Christ laid aside his crown for my soul, for my soul. Christ laid aside his crown for my soul. First they took Jesus to Annas, who was the father-in-law of Caiaphas, who was the high priest that year. Caiaphas was the one who had suggested to his friends that it would be best to have one man die rather than to have all of the people be endangered. Simon Peter and another disciple followed Jesus. Since that disciple was known to the high priest, he went with Jesus into the courtyard of the high priest. But Peter was standing outside at the gate. 
So the other disciple, who was known to the high priest, went out and spoke to the woman who guarded the gate and brought Peter in. The woman said to Peter, You are not also one of this man's disciples, are you? He said, I am not. Now the slaves and the police had made a charcoal fire because it was cold, and they were standing around it and warming themselves. Peter also was standing with them and warming himself. Then Annas, the chief priest, interrogated Jesus about his disciples and about his teaching. Jesus answered, I have spoken openly to the world. I have always taught in synagogues and in the temple where all the Jews come together. I have said nothing in secret. Why do you ask me? Ask those who heard what I said to them. They know what I said. And when Jesus had said this, one of the police standing nearby struck Jesus on the face, saying, Is this how you answer the high priest? Jesus responded, If I have spoken wrongly, testify to the wrong. But if I have spoken rightly, why do you strike me? Then Annas sent Jesus bound to Caiaphas, the high priest. Now Simon Peter was standing and warming himself. And they asked him, You are not also one of his disciples, are you? He denied it and said, I am not. One of the slaves of the high priest, a relative of the man whose ear Peter had cut off, asked, Did I not see you in the garden with him? Again, Peter denied it. And at that moment, the cock crowed. Then they took Jesus from Caiaphas to Pilate's headquarters. It was early in the morning. The servants of Annas and Caiaphas did not enter the headquarters themselves so as to avoid ritual defilement and to be able to eat the Passover. So Pilate went out to them and said, What accusation do you bring against this man? They answered, if this man were not a criminal, we would not have handed him over to you. Pilate said to them, take him yourselves and judge him according to your law. The servants of Annas and Caiaphas replied, we are not permitted to put anyone to death. This was to fulfill what Jesus had said when he indicated the kind of death he was to die. Then Pilate entered the headquarters again. 
summoned Jesus and asked him, Are you the king of the Jews? Jesus answered, Do you ask this on your own? Or did others tell you about me? Pilate replied, I am not a Jew, am I? Your own nation and the chief priests have handed you over to me. What have you done? Jesus answered, My kingdom is not from this world. If my kingdom were from this world, my followers would be fighting to keep me from being handed over to the religious leaders. But as it is, my kingdom is not from here. Pilate asked him, So you are a king? Jesus answered, You say that I am a king. For this I was born, and for this I came into the world, to testify to the truth. Everyone who belongs to the truth listens to my voice. Pilate asked him, what is truth? After he had said this, he went out to the servants of Annas and Caiaphas again and told them, I find no case against him. But you have a custom that I release someone for you at the Passover. Do you want me to release for you the king of the Jews? They shouted in reply, not this man, but Barabbas. Barabbas was a young guerrilla fighter. Then Pilate took Jesus and had him flogged. And the soldiers wove a crown of thorns and put it on his head, and they dressed him in a purple robe. They kept coming up to him saying, Hail, King of the Jews, and striking him on the face. Pilate went out again and said to the servants of Annas and Caiaphas, See, I am bringing him out in order that you may know that I find no reason to order the death of this man. So Jesus came out wearing the crown of thorns and the purple robe. Pilate said to them, Here is the man. When the chief priests and the police saw him, they shouted, Crucify him! Crucify him! And Pilate said to them, Take him yourselves and crucify him. I find no case against him. Annas and Caiaphas answered him, We have a law, and according to that law he ought to die, because he has claimed to be the Son of God. Now when Pilate heard this, he was more afraid than ever. He entered his headquarters again and asked Jesus, Where are you from? But Jesus gave him no answer. Pilate therefore said to him, Do you refuse to speak to me? Do you not know that I have power to release you and power to crucify you? And Jesus answered him, You would have no power over me unless it had been given you from above. Therefore the one who handed me over to you is guilty of the greater sin. From this time on, Pilate was trying even harder to set Jesus free. But Annas and Caiaphas and their servants continually cried out against him, saying, If you set this man free, you are not a friend of Caesar. Everyone who tries to make himself king is speaking and acting against Caesar. And when Pilate heard these words, he brought Jesus outside and sat on the judge's bench at a place called the Stone Pavement, or in Hebrew, Gabbatha. Now it was the day of preparation for the Passover, and it was about noon. He said to Annas and Caiaphas, Here is your king. And they cried out, Away with him, away with him, crucify him. And Pilate asked them, Shall I crucify your king? And the chief priest answers, answered, We have no king but the Caesar. And then Pilate condemned Jesus to death and handed him over to his servants to be crucified.
scornfully surrounded with thorns I only can O sacred head what glory what bliss till now was thine joy to call thee mine. How pale thou art with anguish, with sorrow, abuse, and scorn. How does thy face now languish, which once was bright as morn. Thy grief and bitter passion were all for sinners gain. Mine, mine was the transgression but thine the deadly pain. Carrying the cross by himself, Jesus went out to what is called the place of the skull, which in Hebrew is called Golgotha. There the Roman soldiers crucified Jesus. And with Jesus, they crucified two others, one on each side of him, with Jesus in the middle. Pilate also had an inscription written and put on the cross. It read, Jesus of Nazareth, the King of the Jews. Many of Jesus' own people read the, the inscription because the place where Jesus was crucified was near the city. And the inscription was written in Hebrew, in Latin, and in Greek. Anna and Caiaphas then said to Pilate, Do not write the king of the Jews, but that this man said, I am king of the Jews. Pilate answered, What I have written, I have written. When the soldiers had crucified Jesus, they took his clothes and divided them into four parts, one for each soldier. They also took his tunic. Now the tunic was seamless, woven in one piece from the top. So they said to one another, let's not tear it, but cast lots for it to see who will get it. This was to fulfill what the scripture says. They divided my clothes among themselves, and for my clothing they cast lots. And that is what the soldiers did. Meanwhile, standing near the cross of Jesus were his mother and his mother's sister, Mary, the wife of Clopas, and Mary Magdalene. When Jesus saw his mother, and the disciple whom he loved standing beside her, he said to his mother, Woman, here is your son. Then he said to the disciple, Here is your mother. And from that hour the disciple took her into his own home. After this, when Jesus knew that all was now finished, he said, in order to fulfill the scripture, I am thirsty. A jar full of sour wine was standing there. So they put a sponge full of the wine on a branch of hyssop and held it to his mouth. When Jesus had received the wine, he said, It is finished. 
Then he bowed his head and gave up his spirit. This is the breaking. When the very ground seems to crumble. Because this is what it means to be forsaken. Scream, but no one will hear. So save that breath for your last. Three, two, and your bones seem to split and fracture as every face that once loved you howls like a hunter and you are the prey and they tell you to pray and see if that will make it better. Pray to the God who left you. Three, two, I do not wish this on you to feel your body destroyed, your joints disintegrate, your mouth dry up, your blood pour out, and all the while the crowd looming, waiting for you to crack. This is the breaking, when the betrayals and denials cannot be taken back. And you are alone. Will those stones cry out now? Will those angels carry me now? No. Three. Two. I will pray to the God who left me. Because what else is there to do? No one else is listening either. Do not save me. I am gone. Save them. Forgive them. Save them. Three, two, one. And since it was the day of preparation, in order that the bodies might not remain on the cross during the Sabbath, for that Sabbath was a solemn feast day, Annas and Caiaphas asked Pilate that the legs of the three men being crucified be broken to hasten their deaths, and that their bodies be taken from the crosses. So the soldiers came and broke the legs of the first and of the other who had been crucified with Jesus. But when they came to Jesus, and saw that he was already dead, they did not break his legs. Instead, one of the soldiers pierced his side with a spear, and at once blood and water came out. He who saw this has testified so that you may also believe. His testimony is true, and he knows that he tells the truth. These things occurred so that the scripture might be fulfilled, none of his bones shall be broken. And again, another passage of scripture says, they will look on the one whom they have pierced. After these things, Joseph of Arimathea, who was a disciple of Jesus, though a secret one because of his fear of the chief priests, asked Pilate to let him take away the body of Jesus. Pilate gave him permission, so he came and removed his body. Nicodemus, who had at first come to Jesus by night, also came, bringing a mixture of myrrh and aloes weighing about a hundred pounds. They took the body of Jesus and wrapped it with the spices and the linen cloths, according to the burial custom of the Jews. Now there was a garden in the place where Jesus was crucified, and in the garden there was a new tomb in which no one had ever been laid. And so, because it was the day of preparation and the tomb was nearby, they laid Jesus there. Sometimes. 
Let us pray for the church, for the world, and for all in need. Almighty and eternal God, you have shown your glory to all nations in Jesus Christ. Guide the work of the church. Help it to persevere in faith, proclaim your name, and bring salvation to people everywhere. We pray for Lutheran Church of the Good Shepherd, for the Evangelical Lutheran Church in America, for Bishop Mark and Presiding Bishop Elizabeth, for our staff and Pastor Scott, and all teachers and leaders of the church, and for all the people of God in their daily life and work. Strengthen and uphold your servants Keep them in health and safety, and help us each to do faithfully the work to which you have called us. Almighty and eternal God, you continually bless the church with new members and new life. Increase our faith and understanding. Help us in this time of physical separation 
to re rediscover our love for you and for one another and be renewed for loving service in the world. God, we pray for all our brothers and sisters who share our faith in Jesus Christ, that you may gather and keep together in one church all those who know Christ as Lord. You give your church its unity. Look with favor on all who follow Jesus, your Son. We are all consecrated to you by our baptism. Make us one in the fullness of faith and keep us one in the fellowship of love. We pray for the Jewish people, the first to hear the word of God, that they may receive the fulfillment of the covenant's promises. Long ago, O oh God, you gave your promise to Abraham and Sarah and their posterity. You are faithful to your promise. We give thanks for your assurance that the people you first made your own will arrive with us at the fullness of redemption. Guide your church to so live in unity and peace with these your children as we await your consummation. We pray for those that do not believe in Christ, that the light of the Holy Spirit may show them the way of salvation. Almighty and eternal God, enable those who do not acknowledge you to receive the truth of the gospel. Help us, your people, to grow in love for one another, to grasp more fully the mystery of the Holy Trinity, and so to become more perfect witnesses of your love in the sight of all people. We pray for those who serve in public office, for President Donald Trump, Governor Steve Sisolak, Mayors Hillary Sheevy and Ron Smith. Hear our prayers for them and for governmental leaders around the world, that you would guide their minds and hearts so that all of us may live in true peace and freedom. Hear our prayers for public health officials, that they may be guided by your wisdom and that we, that we would heed their warnings. Oh God, you are the champion of the poor and oppressed. In your goodness, watch over those in authority so that people everywhere may share in the goodness of your creation. Almighty and eternal God, you give strength to the weary and new courage to those who have lost heart. Hear the prayers of all who call on you in any trouble, that they may have the joy of receiving your help in their need. Hear our prayers for those who are sick and suffering. For those who are grieving the loss of loved ones. For medical personnel and for others who work for help and healing. We pray for those who are subjected to racist abuse and discrimination. Hear our prayers for those whose livelihood is threatened by business closures and for all who face uncertainty. We pray for families learning to live and work and learning together in close quarters. We remember those who are not safe in their own homes. Hear our prayers for those struggling with isolation, loneliness, or addiction. For those separated from loved ones because of travel or immigration restrictions. We pray for churches and their leaders seeking to discern new and faithful forms of ministry. Hear our prayers for wisdom for leaders as they seek to respond to this crisis. All these things and whatever else you see that we need, grant us, O oh God, for the sake of Jesus, who was crucified and who now lives with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever.
We pray as Jesus taught us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The night weeps and covers the earth with her protective arms, whispering, I will hold you. The skies crack and the earth groans as God dies. The wilderness is truly empty and there is nothing but silence, the kind of silence that comes when there is no point to breath. And yet, somehow, the rest of us still go on. Breathe with us, O oh earth. Breathe with us, O oh sky. Breathe with us, O oh night. Stay with us as we wait. We wait. We wait. We wait.